I'm here with one of the real giants in the copyright uh, field, a person that's, 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 that's played an important role in a lot of big developments in the copyright field. And I think that uh, you played a very important role in the development of norms for people that, have, that are blind or have other disabilities <laughs> back in 1982. I was wondering if you could introduce yourself to the listeners uh, and explain a little bit about what happened back then. You know, uh, this meeting which was held in Paris uh, was a work, working group set up by the uh, two committees, you know, the Bern Committee, Bern Executive Committee, and the UNESCO Conventions Committee, which at that time was more active. At that time, all these important meetings were held jointly by WIPO and by UNESCO. Now the UNESCO Convention is so important. So, this was proposed in uh, one of the uh, joint sessions of the two committees that we had to deal with. Uh, the exceptions for the visual impaired at that time, we actually didn't call them visually impaired, but uh, blind people and uh, people with uh, uh, problems to, uh, to be able to perceive uh, written works and uh, illustrations. And then a working group was set up. It was not a big one, but uh, all the important uh, groups of uh, countries were represented there. I uh, was the chairman of the uh, working group. And then at that time, I was the chairman of many uh, meetings of WRPO where industrialized countries and developing countries uh, did not have necessarily the same view, and there were many issues. And then, of course, Hungary at that time was a member of the so called socialist, uh, uh, the group of socialist countries. And then there were not too many experts from that group, so uh, frequently I was selected to chair such meetings. And it was not a big uh, uh, working group, but for example, the uh, publishing industry was also represented. So uh, the real discussion took place uh, between the uh, representatives of developing countries and uh, some industrialized countries and the IP industry. And then I think that what was adopted as a principle was very much important and must be an exception for what I refer to now as visually impaired. Um, at that time, of course, we were considering Braille, uh, and if we apply the same principle now, it must be any kind of uh, copies which are in uh, special format necessary for the uh, visually impaired people. And I hope that this uh, meeting will produce an instrument which will be more generous than what we adopted in 1982. In 1982, uh, did you explore much the issue of the cross-border issue? No, at that time it wasn't that. It was just uh, the idea to work out model provisions for uh, national laws. We produced a lot of model provisions and uh, guiding principles in that period. For example, it was in 82, also in Paris, that there was a meeting about the impact of digital technology and internet. No internet, not at that time. So digital technology <laughs> on copyright. And then it was at that time when a uh, kind of recommendation was adopted that it should be recognized that the inclusion of works in computer memory should be reproduction. So uh, we were dealing with both sides. But this is a very good example that uh, it's not true that WIPO always just uh, considered uh, the interest of uh, the right owners. Uh, I knew very much the, uh, the policy of Dr. Arpad Bush at that time. And then uh, he really uh, took into account both sides. And he supported very much, for example, this meeting. He supported very much the other one when we convened the uh, uh, Committee of Government to Experts on the Protection of Folklore. It took place here in the bunker, where the two internet treaties were done. It was the biggest possible meeting of WIP and UNESCO. It was also together, uh, which I attended in that period. And I think that what were adopted there uh, may be used the same way as the model provisions may be used for the uh, new instrument 
which is under preparation now. It may be used for a possible instrument, which is under preparation in WIPL, to protect uh, what we refer to now the uh, traditional cultural expression. So, there were different, different periods of WIPL history. So, uh, before we close the interview, do you want to uh, offer any uh, re uh, comments or reflections on what you si see happening this week at WIPO? Uh, you know, what, what I can see is here that there is an emerging uh, consensus that uh, we should have adopt this treaty, uh, or an or a instrument. Uh, it, it's really, I must tell you, what is not really important is not how we call it. What is important is that it should be uh, appropriate. Uh, it should be should offer appropriate access with appropriate guarantees. Uh, it may be a recommendation. It's a strong recommendation. It may have also the same kind of impact as a treaty. That's 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 what I told you once in in, in New York. <laughs> it's a treaty, and it's in a treaty. It may be negotiated more seriously. I mean that it may may last a little bit more time. But again, I don't think that. What is really important is the form, but the contents. Well, thank you very much.